Okay, if you will take your review sheet and divide underneath the question, the three forms of business organization, divide sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation to make three columns. Lit underneath the columns, answer the questions. What kind of things are similar? Uh, maybe between sole proprietorship and partnership or between partnership and corporation. Uh, what's different? Which one's easiest to form and which one's hardest? So take a minute and do that, and then let's go over it. Also, you can look at the questions below that say, you know, most money, most common, and limited liability. So the three types of business organization, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. The similarities between sole proprietorship and partnership is that both have unlimited liability. Corporations have limited liability. Sole proprietorship, they're really, all of these are defined by how many owners you have. A sole proprietorship has one owner, a partnership has multiple owners, and a corporation has as many owners as there are stockholders. So they're really set apart because they sell stock, and their liability is limited to the value of that stock. When a corporation goes under, if you own stock in that corporation, your stock's not worth anything, but they don't come take your house and your car. If you're in a partnership and your partnership goes under, then your partner, uh, you may be liable for every single debt that your partner's run up, even if you didn't know about them. You might could sue, but if your partner's broke, that's not going to be very effective. And sole proprietorship is the same way. Uh, the, de the debtors will come after your personal assets, your house, your car, that sort of thing, if your business goes under. Sole proprietorships are most common, though, because they are easy to set up. And, of course, there's one owner, so it's pretty easy to make decisions. Partnerships uh, can specialize. This is uh, particularly a group of doctors who might want to share clients or specialize in different things. Um, accountants are another common area where partnerships are located. Uh, lots of business partnerships exist. A corporation is going to be for a type of company that needs to raise a lot of money to be able to do business. So, for example, an electronics uh, company, they have to raise a lot of money. They're going to sell stock, appoint a board of directors to run the company while the stockholders go off and do their own thing, usually. They're hard to start, but they make the most money. The most common sole proprietorship, least common corporation. Even though we deal with corporations a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, remember that there are hundreds of Wendy's in our country, but that's only one corporation. Now we're going to look at the four types of market structure. Students tend to mix these up. When we're talking about types of business, we're talking about how many owners each type of business has. So we're actually looking inside the business. We're not looking outside to see who's competing with us. When we talk about market structure, we're talking about how many other people are selling the same thing I am with a different company. So our four types of market structure are here. A monopoly has only one competitor. You're the only person making this product, which means that you can set prices. Now, you can't set prices insanely high because people will still walk away, even for something like electricity, but you can set prices to a certain extent. Oligopoly has a few competitors. Typically, I think two or three that dominate the market. Uh, video game consoles are a good example here, uh, soda companies, gas stations. They are price interdependent, so because there are a few of them, if one sets their price really low, the other one may have to follow. That would lead to a price war. The other option here is that you can actually fix the price. If you get together and collude illegally, you can talk about it and say, hey man, I'll make sure that I keep my price this high as long as you keep your price that high. And that, of course, would cheat the customers. So obviously it never happens, right? Monopolistic competition. This is what's most common. There are many competitors, and they try to differentiate their product due to advertising. So this is a type of product like fast food, um, sports shoes, where there's a lot of people competing in the market. So they try to say that my product, even though it's close to the same thing, is a little bit different, and it's going to make you want to go in and buy that. Taco Bell is a great example of this. They're constantly putting out new menu items to try to get you in the door. Um, at the same time, if the line at Taco Bell is too long, you may go somewhere else. Perfect competition is more imaginary, but you think of a farmer's market. There's infinite competitors, so just as many competitors as you can think of. And they sell the same product, so the product's not different at all. So again, farmer's market, lettuce, tomatoes, carrots. 
and they have no control over price. They're stuck with what people are willing to pay. So, you know, the only thing you would have to do to get a better price if someone, for example, has a high price, is just go next door to the lower price. So everyone has to sell at this low price or you won't sell anything because all your customers will leave and go somewhere else. Again, that's more imaginary than realistic, but there it is. If you are studying for microeconomics, learning these terms and the terms for the three types of business organization and understanding the difference so that you can narrow it down, this talks about how many people own the business. This talks about how many people are selling the same product out in the market. If you can learn those, I think you'll really increase your score in microeconomics. So if you're a weak test taker or you have trouble with supply and demand, this is a great area for you to study to sort of sort of buoy up that score in that section. A couple of special types of monopolies. A natural monopoly, something like a power plant, cable, or phone company. These are companies where it's very expensive to start up. So you have to run cable to everybody's house. You have to run the phone line to everybody's house, the power line to everybody's house. And so it makes sense that you only have one company that does that. Because of this, natural monopolies are typically regulated by the government. A technological monopoly, typically a short-term monopoly over something you have invented. And this is a way to protect your property. So the government, even in a market economy, the government protects property. And they do that by issuing a patent or a copyright or a trademark, depending on, on what your product is. But technological monopoly is typically short term. So you have a patent for seven years or 10 years or 15 years, depending on the terms. And you are the only person who can make that product. At the end of that period, someone else can come in and make that product as well.